tonight with me on the labor grounds he's Colonel Fred Mwesje. Colonel Fred Mwesje is one of uh, the 27 guys who went to the bush in 1981 to start the NRA Liberation War. And since then, majority of them have died. Now, they are left only five, and he's among the lucky five who are still living alive. Colonel Fred Mr. thanks for joining me on this level ground. This is an interactive news segment where we discuss issues that affect the people and build the nation. Now, this week you will be celebrating the Tare Sita. And we want you now to tell us how you saw it. But before you get into that, people watching us tonight would like to know you, how your journey started from somewhere in Makindi. Okay. We had planned, we were planning under uh, uh, another house where President was staying at that time when he was the Minister of Defense. Then we were planning in the, another house of uh, Leti Kazora. He was a prominent lawyer in this town. And from there, we moved to Matthew Chikaire's home, I think, on the night of 4th. And we stayed there. Uh, several of us, whom we had uh, collected from various units, and uh, we stayed there. And uh, in the evening of the 5th, we entered into a trailer, the first head of the trailer, and uh, it was ruled by now Brigadier Andrew Taya. And uh, we, we drove, and uh, sincerely, not everybody knew where we were heading to. <laughs> so funny, how? Except few leaders who were involved in planning, in wrecking, you know, top secrecy is very, very important in any military operation. So uh, we were there, and we boarded into our truck, and we drove throughout the night. In a closed truck, mark you, closed truck. So nobody knew where we are heading. Uh, but some of us knew uh, where we were going, and, and our leaders, like uh, our president now and others, we are following in another car, small car, which later on brought problems in Masaka. Uh, then they got another small car, and they, they followed us until we reached our destination. But that night of the 5th was a night of anxiety, was a night of tension, and uh, was a night of so many dreams about the unknown. So it was a, a mixture uh, of so many feelings and uh, dreams and anxieties. Now, you were through Massacre. Yes. What's your first stopover? Um, our first stopover was at a place called Makore. This is between Tutsi and uh, the Kabamba. It was about three to four. We waited for our leaders. Uh, this was our, our chairman, our leader, President Yuval Seven. Now, we we stopped there, and we waited. And I want to tell you, we were all shivering because it was so cold, <laughs> and uh, in a bit of darkness. And uh, we waited for some time uh, until he came, and. Uh, he came at about between four and five. He had already arrived at that uh, point. Then he, he he divided us into two groups. One group stayed in the truck, and another group where I was entered in the small car which they, they came into, a small saloon car, which uh, belonged to the father, the late father of late Rumumba. Mr. Yondo. Rumumba the MP? No, Rumumba was a soldier who died, one of the commanders. 
So we entered in this car and we, we drove, we were about seven of us. And uh, we drove, I was with the late Magara, uh, late Mule Mwanga, with the uh, late Dayondi, late Chifuaka Muninga, uh, late Suicide Katunji, and uh, late, late Kajina. We were about seven. So we drove in this small car ahead of the, of the truck. And our briefing was that uh, when you get the quarter guard of Kabamba, the truck, the bigger truck will slightly overtake. So we create space, let it overtake the small car and inform the people at the quarter guard that we are bringing uh, dry rations. Was there any any kind of success? Did you make any kind of success in the mission? Yes, there was There was a success, in my opinion, because first of all, we attacked the barracks, okay? And actually, we, we reached the most of the objectives, like the communication, the logistics, the medical, the officers' houses, and we reached the AMRA. So all our objectives were achieved. We dispersed the, the, the 3,000 plus soldiers who were there. They were all dispersed completely, and some even ran up to Kampala on foot. So, in my opinion, we actually achieved. And again, we made it, we, we made it clear to the world that we had actually launched our liberation struggle. So, yes, the objectives were achieved that day. Did you manage to get some equipment? We managed to get some trucks, some sacks of portion and beans, some medicine, some communication equipment, some small SMGs, small light machine guns. And we moved and we, 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 even, we were joined by some other soldiers who were waiting for us there. And we moved uh, from Kabamba without any interpretation, no. interruption. Mm -hmm up to Kagadi, Kakumiro, Chenjojo, up to Chivoga. Now, where do you head? And what happened after that? Now, from Kabamba, we headed for Chivoga. Now, Chivoga, to go to Chivoga, we had to go through Kabamba, cross Bend Road, go to Kakumiro, Kagadi, and then up to Chivoga. Okay? Now, when we reached Chivoga, we camped in the hills overlooking Chivoga. We camped there at, uh, at the place of uh, late Mzei Kaguriri. Kaguriri was one of our radices, one of our prominent uh, supporters. So we camped there for, for, for a whole night. And uh, the, the trip was very successful because I remember when we reached the Kagadi, we stopped there and uh, entered in some restaurants. Of course, there were not very many. Some people managed to get some food stuff, some pete, some tonto, and you know we moved on. And we, we, we attacked a certain police station, I think, in Kagadi. Got some few weapons, uh, including uh, another PG. And from there, we moved up to another place, uh, in one of the places there. At what point, at what point does you as one of your senior commanders, Fred Rubereza, becomes a victim of circumstances? Fred Rubereza, David Tinyifuza, and uh, others actually came that, during that time. So Rubereza came and took over from me in Nkuruma unit. And then uh, he stayed with me, and I was his 2IC. So we, we kept on carrying out small ambushes on Wamata uh, Chiboga Road, and we carried out several ambushes. Uh, we would uh, 
cut out an ambush, and then we withdraw back to our units, to our bases in Rukola. So, in one of the operations, we raided a small unit in Wamata and uh, we, we captured so many weapons, which included some and tank weapons and very many hand grenades, stick grenades. So, one of the, of course, we'd have a number or something, but we would have a small place where we would keep our weapons or capture weapons and ammunition. So the incident uh, where there is lost his life that we had this tank. This is a very powerful tank, a powerful weapon, uh, a tank grenade which is supposed to blast a tank. So as we were uh, taking stock of the ammunition and the weapon that we had captured, uh, this uh, ant tank had a loose head. So, as he was uh, trying to fix the head, he hit it down. Now, when he hit it down, then it blasted him. And I was there, and we lost about four comrades instantly. I was uh, injured, and uh, I was treated. So, and we even had uh, some civilians also who were injured. Thanks for joining me, Can of Freight, on this Pro Interactive News segment. A segment where we host people of sound mind like you to discuss issues that affect this country and issues that should move the country forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right.